Hey everyone, and welcome to Throne Talk. On today's episode, I'll be giving five bold predictions based on what we saw in the Season 5 trailer. My predictions will combine things that we saw from Season 4, events from the books, and some set leaks, so I'm going to issue a big spoiler warning right now if you don't want to know what might be going down. Okay, let's get started. Number 5. All three dragons will be causing chaos. Even though this shot was probably just put in the trailer to let people know that the dragons will be back, it really stood out to me because 1. Why is this shot in the pitch dark? And 2. Doesn't that look green to you? Last season we saw the green dragon Regal and the golden dragon Viserion being locked up in the catacombs under the Great Pyramid, while Drogon, the black one and the largest of the three, was last seen flying over the coast of Slaver's Bay. In the books, when Danny attends a match between the gladiators of the fighting pits of Marine, the bloodshed and chaos attracts Drogon to the location, and soon after he's attacking combatants and unleashing his fiery breath. Only when Danny herself is engulfed in his flame is she finally able to control the dragon and fly out of the arena on its back. Probably what will happen on the show is Jorah's match is interrupted by the Revolters, and Drogon saves the day, but not before causing major damage. As for Rhaegal though, one of the now confirmed cast members for Season 5 is a character called Catacomb Master, and his name appeared in a leaked casting call from earlier in the year, which said that a group of masters would suffer major traumas at the hands of dragons, with an S. I think there's two options of what could be going on with this scene. First, with Danny's monologue about breaking the wheel and last season's they can live in my new world or die in their old one, it could be she's straight up feeding the dragons any masters that won't follow her. The other option is that a group of masters are successful in infiltrating the pyramid and that plan goes up in smoke when they try to tame the dragons but are instead barbecued. The second options would have major repercussions to certain book characters, so I think the first option is more likely, especially since the Harpy statue is a symbol of all the people of Slaver's Bay, and for the Masters to tear it down wouldn't make much sense. Last season Littlefinger brought up how the Knights of the Vale used to ride off to fight in wars past, and now we're seeing shots of these same knights riding around and Peter talking about vengeance. The Vale has one of the largest untapped armies at this point, and I believe him and Sansa intend to use it. In the books, Baelish planned for Sansa to seduce and wed the heir of the sickly Lord Robin, and after the child's death and revealing her true identity to her new husband, the Lord of the Vale would lead his forces to retake Winterfell in the name of the new lady. I however don't think this will be Peter's plan on the show, because it's a lot more drawn out than it needs to be. Baelish had a lot of detractors in the books, mainly the Lord's Declarant, a group of the most influential Lords of the Vale who form up and declare their intent to remove Peter from power. But these detractors are not at all present on the show. In fact, their leader Yon Royce was last seen agreeing with and apologizing to Baelish. So my crackpot theory for the show is that Baelish plans to attack House Frey. In Season 4, it was stated a few times how the people of the Riverlands despised the Freys for what they did at the Red Wedding, and they seemingly would flock to support the Tullys again if one could return in strength. If the Blackfish just so happened to come to the Vale after escaping the Wedding, Peter could gain his trust and hence the Riverlords by agreeing to an all-out assault on the Twins to try and save Edmure. The fact that none of the new shots from the Vale look like it's the Heart of Winter, which would stop any battle plans in their tracks, and that we do see the Knights of the Vale riding around in several shots and some leaks. I think this idea isn't totally crackpot, but I'm definitely excited to see what Baelish is up to and why he was spotted on the King's Landing set this season. Number 3. Ilaria Sand will be the Queenmaker. For someone who's only a minor character in the books, Ilaria got a ton of screen time in the trailer, the sight teasers, and the featured images. To me, all these signs point to Ilaria filling the role of one of the biggest names left out from Season 5, Princess Ariane Martell, the daughter and heir of Doran Martell. In the books, Arianne wants revenge for the deaths of Oberyn and Elia, but Doran forbids it, so she begins her own plotting and decides that she'll crown Marcella Baratheon, Queen of the Seven Kingdoms, with the people of Dorne backing her claim. Marcella is the middle child of the incest bunch, and she was sent to Dorne in Season 2 after Tyrion arranged her betrothal to Tristane Martell, Doran's youngest son. Due to the inheritance laws in Dorne and the fact that Arianne isn't the only one who seeks revenge against the Lannisters, her plan nearly succeeds, but like most things in Song of Ice and Fire, it ends horribly when Dorne's men discover the plan and Marcella is seriously injured by a rogue knight. Even though Ilaria's book character is like a complete pacifist, she definitely looks like she's up to no good in every single shot she's in. Plus, Tristane and Marcella are supposed to be madly in love on the show, which would add a nice wrinkle to the Queenmaker plot. One of Arianne's major weapons was using her sexuality to influence others, but I'm not totally sure they'll go this route on the show with the Widow Delaria, 
and instead, I think this is where the Sand Snakes come in. The Sand Snakes are the bastard daughters of Prince Oberyn, and they're more than keen on seeking revenge for the deaths of their father. Supposedly an audition tape for one of the Sand Snakes leaked online back in June, and in the tape, a woman off screen talks to them about Cersei's children and starting a war with the Lannisters. Now, I'm not totally sure how valid that video is, but it definitely sounds like Ilaria trying to get the Sand Snakes to join her cause. Number 2. Gendry will replace Young Griff. Young Griff is a character that Tyrion meets shortly after landing in Essos after his escape from King's Landing. The boy claims to be Aegon Targaryen, the child of Elia Martell that was supposedly killed by the Mountain at the end of Robert's Rebellion. Aegon tells Tyrion he plans to wed Daenerys and cement a claim to the Iron Throne, but Tyrion eventually convinces him to first attack Westeros in order to win Danny over, and he does just that, capturing several castles in the Stormlands with 10,000 swords under his command. Now there's been no word on this character's casting, but with Cersei's trial going on, the Faith uprising, and possibly two to three Kingsguard members going missing this season, the throne is going to be completely distracted, and this is the perfect time for someone to swoop in and start carving out a nice piece of Westeros. If Young Griff is going to be introduced on the show, I think it would have to be during this season, and whether Varys' line in the trailer was a red herring or not, it would be dumb not to try and take advantage of the weakened state of the throne during this time. We know Varys will be in Pentos at the start of the season, and I believe this is one of the locations Gendry could have ended up after his escape from Dragonstone. If Varys could find King Robert's bastard and plop him down in the Stormlands amidst all the incest rumors and accusations coming Cersei's way, Gendry could definitely cause a big enough distraction to draw forces out of the capital. All of this would be Varys' distraction, of course, which paves the way for Danny, the ruler with a large army and the right family name, to take the city with ease. Now this plan seems a lot more like Littlefinger than Varys, and while it's possible Gendry could actually end up in the Vale, I just really think that Varys needs something crazy like this, or the Young Griff plot, to maintain his status as one of the most epic characters in the series. Number 1. Melisandre will try to sacrifice Princess Shireen. Here's some quotes from two separate conversations between Stannis' wife Solis and Melisandre during Season 4. In Episode 2, Solis says, I fear for my daughter's soul, she has heretical tendencies. Then in Episode 7, Melisandre says, Look into the Lord's light and see his truth for yourself, however harsh it is. When we set sail for the wall, your daughter must be with us, the Lord needs her. If you guys haven't noticed yet, the show leaves major hints for upcoming character deaths throughout every season. For example, last season Tyrion told Oberyn, you could at least wear a helmet before his fight with the mountain, and Littlefinger foreshadowed Tywin's death by stating how people die squatting over the chamber pots. I think Melisandre and Solis' conversation was another case of major foreshadowing, especially with words like fearing for her daughter's soul and a harsh truth. Plus, the Lord of the Light is a god of fire and death, and has not yet been associated with marriage in the books of show. So why would the Lord need Princess Shireen if not to sacrifice her? Shireen and Solis' story has been streamlined quite rapidly from the books, as they're already at the wall. So if Stannis is to leave Castle Black to address the Boltons, and Jon leaves for Hardhome, there will be no one to stop Melisandre and the fanatic Solis. Solis is even crazier on the show than in the books, as we can see from her fetus jars, and how she happily allowed her own brother Axel Florent to be burned alive last season. Now, not to spoil the whole show, but if the event at the end of Dance goes down this season, having a king's blood filled child with a stone face would probably be helpful in waking a dragon. Well, that's all I got for you guys. Let me know in the comments what are some of your theories for this season. As always, leave your suggestions for future videos and hit subscribe for more Throne Talk.